Hi guys, welcome back. So this is the repository that I just created called GitHub CMS. Now, if you observe, we don't have discussions which we are going to use as a, you know, a content for our blog. We can enable it by going to settings and going to this uh, features section and clicking on this discussions. Once you do that, you will have this discussions tab available and you can go there and you can create your discussions. Now, there are a few ways to get these discussions into our blog. One of them is you know, through REST API, and the other one is uh, using GraphQL. Now, REST API is quite nice. This is the starting point, api.github.com. Now, you go here, and you can find things uh, that is appropriate, and you can get those. Uh, one thing I don't like about it is it, it's, uh, it's huge, right? The response you get is huge. It might waste a lot of bandwidth of your user and also the fine grain control is not possible here let me show you what i mean so let's say i type my yeah uh, repo name and owner or username as well so i'm getting this information of this repo so this api provides all this information which i may or may not need but it's it's uh, you know it will it will send all those there can be filters that I can apply, but I'm not sure. But let's imagine I just want this, right? The owner login, maybe. Uh, I don't think there is an easy way to get that. But in case if you're using, you know, GraphQL, so this is the endpoint for GraphQL, and you can just get the information you want. So let me show you how we can do that. So there is this explorer that uh, I will leave the link in the description uh, for GitHub. So what you can do is you can search for um, repository here and type the name of the repository, which was GitHub CMS and the owner. I think before you do all this, you may have to sign in because, you know, uh, it will ask you. But anyway, the owner is Sharu725. And after that, I can uh, look for owner and then login and if i click run here i get exactly the detail i wanted in in just this i mean i may have to dig through this and get it uh but it's it's way better than like you know getting a big object and then going through it and then parsing it so this this i think is it saves a lot of bandwidth for your end user and also it is uh, i think uh, since the data is less it will be quicker to get this response now graphql is all good but is it going to be complicated than what we are used to which is usually the rest api it's not we can actually use just the fetch instead of using any graphql clients uh, like apollo relay yourql you don't need any of that you can just use fetch and get this uh, I, i'll show you how to do that as well now before we do that um, so we can we can go through the documentation of how to make these GraphQL queries, and uh, you might see that there is a token that is required in order to make these GraphQL queries. Um, you can uh, you can actually do REST APIs without the token, but it will be rate limited for both uh, REST API and GraphQL. You would need a token for a good rate limit. If you have a paid account, I think you can have more requests per minute. But anyway, so for the for the time being, it's it's quite enough for us. Now, how do we get the token? So you go to your, you know, uh, GitHub page, and then you go to settings, and that's the page here. And you go all the way to developer settings, and then here you click on this token classic. And once you do that, uh, you will create a token. And I already have a token and, you know, it will it will show you your token. You will have to copy that and it will not be shown to you again. So uh, make sure when it shows you copy it and you don't like forget it. Now, let's go back to uh, getting maybe just this information uh, in our SwelteKit app. So now uh, I have, you know, cloned this app to my uh, local machine. And I have uh, I have already run npm create swelt 
which uh, which will install the Svelte Kit app for us. And I have installed the Skeleton app and also I'm running it. Now if I go to localhost here, so I, I see this. So this is our app. So let's make one simple GraphQL query using fetch and see how it works. And before that, I will also show the you know REST API things as well. So let's create a page.js file. And uh, here we'll have a load function using which we will get the response. Now what we can do is const uh, response equals you can await since it's already an asynchronous function. Uh, you can fetch and you can put the URL. Like I'm tr I'm trying to put this URL, let's say. So this is the REST API. Now if I do const uh, data equals await response.json and if I console that data and I think in my browser where I have this um, this third I will get this object which is the entire REST API right uh, this API so I will have to go to you know dot owner and then uh, get all those dot owner and then login so it's quite simple the REST API way uh, but in, if you want to do it the GraphQL way so what you do is you get the query so this is this will be our query now we will uh, no this will be our query that is the response uh, we go here and maybe do something like const uh, query equals uh, use uh, maybe you know uh, you can also use brackets but if you have like dynamic things here you may have to use these back ticks and then have the query here so i have these hard coded which is uh, which we might replace in the future so once that is there you can do is you can replace this with our uh, graphql url which is uh, this one all right so this will be the url for all the requests we make uh, and only the query will change so how do we pass the query so because we cannot just pass things using get right so we use post method to pass things so have a method as post here right and then you can have uh, some headers that that is required i will uh, add those headers here uh, the headers we want is one is content type content type which is application json and the other one is uh, the bearer token which we saw forming the calls here so this is the one maybe content type is not even required but i will have it just in case uh, i will have the authorization bearer token here uh, and then comma uh, i think i should uh, separate these like this okay this would be good um so that is there but where did we pass the query we didn't yet so we'll do body here and then we will do json.stringify because uh, it should be stringified data and we'll pass the query here in a as an object so once this is there i think we will get the data but uh, we may not because you know we don't really have the token but we can test i, I think it will throw an error here uh, let me see okay so it says requires you to be authenticated now i will get my token in a second all right now i have created a dot env file here and i have gotten this um, token uh, i call this github underscore token all caps and then i have uh, pasted my token here okay now once that is done i can import that here uh, from I think it's a uh, um, github token from it should be uh, dollar env I think it's small letters uh, static private okay so this will give us github token and uh, what we can do is we can uncomment this and also we may have to use the 
template literal or backticks here bearer remains the same instead of token here we'll have dollar and then github token right so that would uh, pass the token and i think at least now we should get it uh okay so i'm getting it in the client side very nice so we we got this error which is quite nice because um so i have imported a private token into my client side code so this should never happen because if you do that anyone can ha have access to your token right so in order to make this work i will have to change this to dot server dot js now once i do this so this will not be available to anyone uh, to the client so that way it will it will definitely work now, once i do that once i have this token uh, and i see that i have and i refresh and i go back here i have this data right so what i can do is i can actually um instead of this now uh, okay i can actually do const uh, um what is it i want owner so const owner equals data dot data dot repository dot owner right so i can console the owner out here and that shows the login shows owner. so i just got the data i wanted now instead of all this i can actually destructure right here like this data i think it's a uh, uh, repository yeah, you can also actually look here in the query itself and get the idea of what the structure would be owner and then i can also get login and i can just log out login here itself yeah so i just got the exact thing i wanted now i can return this and i can get this here in my page and i show it so that was it about how to have a simple graphql using fetch in the next one we are gonna simplify it maybe you know make it reusable and uh, we will we'll discuss more about what is the best way of getting this request so that you know it, it will be useful for the long run so thanks guys i'll see you in the next one bye bye